Welcome to Restaurant Food Fast with your host, Chuck Brooks. Um, today we're going to do a quick recipe. My son's been asking for stroganoff for a while. So we're going to do a real easy stroganoff. Um, we're actually going to do spatzels too, which is a homemade uh, noodle. Uh, Eastern European, Czech, Hungarian type thing, but they're real easy also. So uh, I'll be back with you in a minute. I'm going to do the... Uh, the inventory, my ingredients list, and we'll get right to it. All right, we're gonna get into our stroganoff episode. I'm gonna do the uh, beef portion first. You can actually do this with anything you want. I've got uh, just a piece of a top round uh, London broil type. Um, they're not real expensive. You can do this with ground meat. Um, if you do it with chicken, you change the name of it. It's now called paprikash, uh, but basically it's the same thing. I happen to have a piece of London broil. This is what we're going to use today. Um, so that's the, the beef portion. For the rest of it, if you think about it, stroganoff is basically cooked beef with a sour cream gravy. So, of course, sour cream, doesn't matter what kind, anything you got is good. You can use cream cheese. You can use um, chip dip. You can use any of the, like the French onion, anything like that will work just fine. A um, little bit of milk, depends how much sauce you're going to make, how thick you're going to need it is how much milk you're going to use, so I'm going to tell you that, so I do it. Beef base, basis for your gravy, mushrooms, stroganoff typically always has mushrooms in it, and I have some, I made Marcella last night, and I have some mushrooms left over, so woohoo. And flour. And that's basically the meat portion of it. It's real easy. The spatzels are real easy too. They're, it's basically a, a water and egg dough. Um, well, actually, in this case, milk and egg. So for those, for that, I'm going to use, I got two eggs. Um, I'm going to use about a cup of flour, a quarter cup of milk. Um, and that's really basically it. Season a little bit of salt and pepper. And it's, it's real simple. Um, but we'll get that started. I got my water boiling already because I hate waiting for it to boil. So I got that boiling for the spatzels and I'm just going to cut up the meat and um, we're going to start going. So I'm going to get my pan hot. All right, we're going to get ready. I'm going to cut up the beef. Um, it's going to be real easy. I know I tell you this every time. Again, when you're going to use your knife, sharpen it. Always just give it a hit. But I got my pan on. Got a little bit of butter. You can use oil, whatever you want. And um, I'm actually going to strip this down because I don't need pieces that long. So cut into a strip, once that about four inches across, and then you just make thin cuts out of it. Now this stuff is real easy, you don't have to worry about, most of the time when you're cooking you want to season all your products um, before you start cooking with it. Since this is more like a, I don't know, I guess I equate it to like a stew, you can actually do it during. That's pretty much what I'm going to do is, once I get these cut down and put in there and start moving them around, I'm going to start seasoning them. Now, I don't like this big, you can see this big run of fat, so, now you don't, when you buy meat, you want to see the fat on it, because that's what gives it flavor, but I don't like all of that. If I was going to grill it, I'd leave it on, but since I'm not, it goes. Remember, keep your fingers out of the way. Easy 
onion? Just for flavor? Well, no, of course. For something else. It's for aesthetics. Of course it's just for flavor. I don't use a whole lot. There's not a whole lot of onion called for and straight on. If you like it, put in more. Now I'm going to season the salt and pepper. Don't be afraid to season. I know I told you last time, when you're seasoning, I think the difference between a lot of people when they cook at home and when they eat at a restaurant is when you're, when you're seasoning something, you have to remember how many people you're seasoning for. This is a, a, a meal that can feed eight to 10 people. So if you put in enough salt for one dish, it's never going to have enough seasoning. That's why you see all these these chefs tell you season everything you're doing, because that's a that's one way, sure fired way for you to get enough seasoning in the pan. Just remember, if you're doing eight servings, which you would put on a plate, eight times as much for the entire thing. But basically, I mean, you, you sit, you brown it up, um, and this is almost done as we as it sits. I'm going to start doing the spatzel. So basically I'm going to take a quarter cup of milk. And the two eggs. Beat them up. So they get mixed pretty well. Now I'm going to take a cup of flour. And this is, I think it's a third of a cup, I guess. This is not a real big batch. Salt, pepper, okay, mix in your wet ingredients. That's pretty much it. Mix it up, it's going to form a, a dough, kind of. very loose. Um, I'll show you how to drop these. There's a ton of different ways. You'll see a lot of times people say push it through a colander. Um, you can do that. It's a pain. But you can do it. I'll show you how my my dad's mom, she was from Hungary, and uh, she had a different way of doing it with a spatula, and I'll show you how to do that. That's pretty much it. You can see the consistency. That's what you're looking for. That's basic space will do. It's real easy. Um, I'm going to let that sit for a minute. I'm going to go back to attend this beef. So basically, when you start cooking this down, it browns the bottom when you start because the, the pan's real hot if you preheat. So it's going to get a nice fond on the bottom of it. And then as the meat cooks, it starts releasing the water and the fats and the juices and that actually pulls it up off the bottom. So if you can see on the bottom here, it has a nice a nice gravy to it already. Um, sometimes you need more, sometimes you don't. So basically what I'm going to do first is I'm going to add the uh, sour cream just to see the thickness and the flavor of it. And then if I decide I need more, then I can always add to it. But to me, I find it easier to adjust it once I put this in um, and get get a look at what it's going to be 
what it's going to materialize into. I'm actually just going to use all of it. Um, I pulled it off the heat. Just going to mix it up. You got to watch with dairy products, they break real easy, which means if you get too much heat to them, um, that you can actually just break your sauce. And it's uh, it's not a good thing. Because then everything you've done, there's, I mean, there are some ways they say that you can pull them back together. You, It's just a pain. You can re-thicken it. Sometimes that'll do it. If you're cooking at home, it's not really a big deal. But that's pretty much it. Once this sucks up the sauce, um, smells perfect. It looks about right. I may not even need the uh, beef broth. I'm hoping I don't. It looks looks about right. I'm going to give it a taste here and see. See if it needs anything, needs any seasonings. Uh, a little more salt. A little more pepper. And that's it. Basically, it's uh, the stroganoff part's done. Now you can put these over regular noodles if you want. Give it anything you want it over. So I'm just going to turn this heat off because it's finished. Oh, you know what I did forget? I'm going to do a second pan. So I'm going to put this back on. I like mushrooms. I forgot to put the mushrooms in. You should put those in when you're doing the meat. Since I didn't. I'm just going to fire them up now. Cook them on their own and just dump them back into the sauce. So I'm kind of glad I forgot those because it, it lets you see that no matter what you do, you're not going to mess it up. You can't. Your sauce is already perfect. Mushrooms don't really don't add a lot of flavor to it. Um, basically, they're just there as, a, as an element. A little salt, a little bit of pepper. That's pretty much it. Saute them off pretty good. Now I'm going to show you how to do the spacel. If I can find what I'm looking for here. This, basically. You can use a butter knife, you can use anything. This just happened to be handy. And as big a scotch as you have will work perfect. All you do is take take this dough and you put it on the spatula, kind of cover the spatula like that. Then to cook them, you just cut it and drop them. Just like that. And that's it. That's all there is to it. Now you can see why they say, okay, run it through a colander. Um, you can do that just as well if you want to take the time to do it. I personally don't. I just do it this way because I really don't care about the... It's not restaurant. It's for home. I'm not, I really don't care how the uh, consistency comes out if they're not perfect. I kind of like that home style. Good. But that's it. You just kind of keep doing this. And your space will get done. Then when they're done, they float. Just like most other uh, flour pasta type products. So as you can tell, I'm not real concerned with their what they look like. That looks good. All done. Now, if you would have cooked those mushrooms in with this, the uh, the beef, same thing. You just fire them in there, cook them along with your meat, and it's done. But uh, the sauce is basically done. I've just got these noodles to deal with here. I'm going to get some sort of strainer.
this will work just fine. Little bowl. And now, you saw those little bits of the spacels that I poured in? That's how big they get. So I guess the, one of the reasons why they put it through a colander is because those small holes expand. Now, I, like I say, I like these. This is what I'm used to. This is the way my grandmother did it. Big hunks of uh, spates, almost like dumplings. I think just about every ethnic group in the world has their version of spatzel, um, drop dumplings of some sort. They're usually super, super easy. Um, pretty much why, that's why everybody has them. Because it's not, they're not difficult to do. Typically, if I was serving these at home, oh geez, turn on the fan here. Um, if I was serving these at home, I would put all the spatzels in a big bowl, dump everything over top of it, and you can dish it out yourself. Um, but I'm going to show you how to play it if you would get it at a restaurant. Now, this is one of those meals where you, you really wouldn't serve this with anything. It is a meal in itself, other than vegetable. Um, that's basically it. That will be it. That's your stroganoff. That quick, that easy. Um, not real hard to do. Like I say, if you change just the chicken, use a lot of paprika, you've got paprikash, which is again Eastern, uh, Eastern European. Super simple. Um, really nice, heavy dinner. Good winter food. So if you live up north like we do, then uh, this is one of those things that come in out of the snow and it makes you feel a whole lot better. But uh, it's pretty much it. Um, it's it's done. It's quick. It's in a hurry. You can make it with ground meat. You can make it with chicken. You can make it with well, I guess you can make it with pork. I never tried, but um, anything works. Um, you could probably turn that vegetarian, doing it with a squash of some sort, and it it's really really simple. Um, all right, there you go. Um, stroganoff spatzels. Spatzels work great with everything. That's uh, if you take anything out of this recipe. Remember the spatzels. Um, just butter and onions. They're, they're great as a side dish. You can put them with any sort of stew, soups, anything like that. They're just big, hearty, homemade noodles. Um, really, really nice thing to know how to make. Super quick. Um, now that's pretty much it. It's real easy. Um, appreciate all the feedback we've been getting. And don't forget, restaurantfoodfast at gmail.com. Anything you want to see us do, any questions you have, um, I'll field any and all questions. So, like I say, I may not know them, but I'll sure be able to find out. So, that's, that's pretty much it. Um, like again, I, I appreciate the support and the feedback. And, yeah, I'm getting asked by my producer what, what we're going to do next week. And I really don't know yet. <laughs> the stroganoff was my son, Zach. He's been wanting it, so I figured that's quick and easy. Um, that plate didn't even make it. It, it, we got the picture took of it and it was gone. Um, if you want to make it real fancy, I took a little bit of dill and sprinkled dill on top of it as I plated it. Um, anything, speaking of dill, any cream sauces you make, dill adds a real nice taste to the cream sauces. But no, as I don't know what I'm going to make next week. I really haven't thought about it. Um, maybe mac and cheese. I'll show you how to make some homemade mac and cheese. It's real easy because if you can do the Alfredo, you can do the mac and cheese. And that one's going to be really, really quick. And you can jazz it up with all kinds of stuff. You can put peppers in it, um, ham, all kinds of stuff. So, yeah, there you go. We'll do, we'll do a homemade mac and cheese, and I'll show you how to, to do it right so you're not eating boxed mac and cheese anymore. All right, see you guys next week.